Here's a fascinating antiderivative problem from the 2023 MIT Integration B semifinals. And the look of this integration problem is absolutely stunning. I mean, just looking at just, just looking at gives you the feeling that you're going to have an aesthetically pleasing solution development and a beautiful result as well. So as always, we're going to call our integral i, so we have something to refer to. And notice that we have exponentials and triggy functions. And as my good friend Man Stuck in a Box once said, whenever we see exponentials and triggy functions together, our brain should imme immediately go for Euler's wonderful formula. So according to Euler, e to the i x equals the cosine of x plus i times the sine of x. And in our case, you have the cosine of 2x plus sine x. So translating this to the complex exponential, that means we need to take the real part of e to the i times 2x plus sine x. So this implies that our integral i is the integral of e to the cosine x, uh, the real part of the integral of e to the cosine x times e to the i times 2x plus sine x dx. So you can see here the Euler's formula really helps make our work much easier because now we're only dealing with exponential functions rather than an assortment of exponentials and triggy functions. So I'm going to write this here as the real part of the integral of e to the cosine x times e to the 2ix plus i times sine x. And using the properties of the exponential function, we can write this as a product of exponential functions. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to collect these two terms and write them collectively, again using the properties of the exponential functions, uh, whereby their arguments will add up. So I have e to the cosine x plus i times sine x times e to the 2ix. And we recognize once again, using Euler's formula, that this here is just e to the e to the ix. And this term is being multiplied by e to the 2ix. And we're integrating with respect to x, of course. So what next? Well, I'm going to need to perform a substitution here, where I let ix equal t which implies that dx equals 1 by i dt. Now this here implies that i equals uh, the real part of 1 by i times the integral of e to the e to the t times e to the 2 times t dt. And once again, I'm just going to expand this term, writing it as e to the t times e to the t, and wait, that is a horrible t. Sorry, my handwriting is never going to improve anyway. Okay, so I have this nice structure in front of me, and I can perform one more substitution that's going to make my life much easier. And that substitution is letting e to the t equal u, which implies that e to the t dt equals du. So this implies that i is now the real part of 1 by i times the integral. Now this here becomes e to the u. Then we have another u term here, and all of this is just the differential element, the u. And now we have a very simple integral that we can evaluate using integration by parts. So we need the real part of 1 by i times, let me just uh, pop the curly braces over here, uh, the real part of 1 by i times e to the u times u minus the integral differentiating u with respect to u just gives you 1 and you're left with the integrated function e to the u du. Okay, and this integral obviously evaluates to the exponential function again. So I have now evaluated the integral and now all I have to do is go from the u world back to the x world where I started from. So this here is the real part of 1 by i times remembering that u was just e to the t, so we have e to the t here, and wait a second, I can factor out an e to the u term, right? So yeah, that makes stuff a bit nicer. So u equaled e to the t, and this is 
a minus one term as well. And remembering exactly what t was. Now I remember t was what we said equal to i times x. So that means i equals the real part of one by i times e to the e to the i x times e to the i x minus one. Now for some beautiful application of complex analysis and trigonometry. So we're going to expand all of the complex exponentials now. So this implies that i equals the real part of 1 by i times e to the cosine x plus i times sine x. And inside here, again, we have cosine x plus i times sine x minus 1. And we have to separate this into real and imaginary parts, correct? And don't forget, we're multiplying by 1 by i as well. Okay, nice. And once again, using the properties of the exponential function, I can write this as the product of e to the cosine x times e to the i times sine x. And what I want to do here is take this term, take this term, and express it as a nicer complex exponential. So I have cosine x minus 1 as the real part, and I have this plus i times sine x. I'm going to call this complex number here z. And I'm going to use some trigonometry here using the double angle formula. So we know that sine x is going to be equal to 2 times sine x by 2 times cosine x by 2. And cosine x equals, in terms of the sine function, 1 minus uh, twice the square of sine x by 2. So just some shifting around there gives you cosine. I'm just going to write it here. So cosine x minus 1 equals the negative of this term. So I've translated both these terms into the corresponding trigy functions, but with half angles. So this implies that I can write z as negative 2 times the square of the sine of x by 2 plus i times the sine, uh, twice the sine that is, uh, twice the sine of x by 2 times the cosine of x by 2. And I can actually factor out this uh, 2 times sine x by 2 term as well. So twice the sine of x by 2, uh, negative sine x by 2 here, plus i times the cosine of x by 2 as well. And this is nice, this is quite nice. And the reason it's quite nice is because I can now translate this term here into a more palatable form for our uh, solution development. So because twice the sine of x by 2 is a real number, we can just factor it out. So this implies that i equals twice the sine of x by 2 times the real part of 1 by i times e to the cosine x times e to the i times sine x times um, i times the cosine of x by 2 minus the sine of x by 2. And if you multiply by 1 by i here, then the i's cancel out for the cosine term. And then the sine term is being multiplied by 1 by i. And one of the coolest things about complex analysis is the reciprocal of the imaginary unit actually equals its additive inverse. So you have a, a negative 1 by i term here, and that gives you a positive i term. Okay, cool. So this implies that i equals twice the sine of x by 2 times the real part of e to the cosine x times e to the i times sine of x times the cosine of x by 2 plus i times the sine of x by 2. And once again, we can make use of Euler's beautiful formula and write this in the form of a complex exponential. So we can write this as uh, e to the i times x by 2. This was awesome. Amazing. I am really loving this solution development here. So we have twice the sine of x by 2 times the real part of e to the cosine x times e to the, just multiplying these two terms and factoring out the i from uh, the argument, we have i times sine x plus x by 2. And remember, we were interested in the real part. And this is a real number anyway. 
So you can just factor it out here. And the real part of the complex exponential is the cosine thing. So all of this implies that the integral of e to the cosine x times the cosine of 2x plus sine x dx equals e to the cosine x uh, twice e to the cosine x times the sine of x by 2 times the cosine of uh, x by 2 plus sine x. So yeah, that is a surprisingly beautiful result. I really enjoyed this solution development and I hope you enjoyed the video as well. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.